October 25th, 2010 will forever be in my mind as one of the most kinetic days in the Sangin River Valley. That one I'll never forget. Recon, we're bold. We're gonna get in their face and we're gonna put some fire superiority towards you. You poke at us, we're gonna poke twice as hard back at you. Seven months of what we went through, I mean, that, that's traumatizing. I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. My mission is to bring everybody home alive, no matter what cost. We were very fortunate that although we went through a lot, no one died, thankfully. And it kind of feels like, like we got lucky. My name is uh, Dave Jarvis. Uh, spent 20 years in the Marine Corps. Retired as a Master Sergeant out of uh, First Recon Battalion. My name is Peter Michelena. I was a Sergeant in the Marine Corps. The commanders came down and we're going to go ahead and put recon up in the Sangin River Valley to stir up this nest of Taliban. They're doing a lot of damage to the infantry units. My role in Afghanistan was primarily as a point man. And during that time, I served on over 90 to 120 combat patrols, leading us through Helmin Province, Sangin, Chiknawa, Nawa, Marja. Being in recon, we had all these assets to our fingertips. We had high Mars, we had rotary wing, we had fixed wing, machine guns, our snipers. You know, we came with a pretty heavy package. We weren't afraid to use it. And that bold and decisive action really put the fear and intimidated our adversary. So much so is they identified us as the Black Diamonds. The Black Diamond is a night vision triangle mount on the front side of our helmets. Hey, don't mess with the Black Diamonds. They're just gonna, they're gonna run us over. It was right around eight o'clock in the morning. It was a pretty cold morning. We had received reports of an ID factor being in the area that was pretty close to our compound. We had taken a break before, wait for the sun to come up. And then we had started our route down the path and going up to the building. We encountered a IED followed by an ambush. So it was more of a complex type attack on our platoon. There was a, a local that had been riding a motorcycle and was coming down the road looking at us. I remember looking at him and looking back over at Bobby and Todd pushing up to the entrance of the compound, and that's kind of the last thing I remember before the IED hit. Afterwards, uh, we were kind of coming to. I had been shaken by the blast pretty hard, and reached Bobby, and from there, you know, I saw him kind of with blood coming down his face. You get a lot what we call helmet fire. Too many people on the radio at once and put some aircraft in the air, send some escorts with them so they can drop some ordnance first and then we can bring in a rotary wing asset to get these guys up and out of here and back to where they need to be. That was pretty extensive firefight with the Blackhawk coming in in order to pick up Todd, and I was holding security on the wall. You got people patching people up, you got people returning fire, and you got people communicating to aircraft and to hire, let them know what's going on. It seems like forever, you know, when you're in the moment. You saw two or three RPGs come flying in, almost narrowly missed the bird. I was helping guys get over the wall. There was about a six foot drop that we had to help them get down, as well as help lower Todd down to the field. And, um, Remember them running across the fields of the bird, kind of as machine guns were tearing up behind them. We're all going home. Whatever it takes, we're going home. Uh, we're gonna do our job and, and, and that's what we did.
was offered up to us to come out to Montana on the Bighorn River, do a couple days of fly fishing, sit back, have some good meals, you know, kick a few beers back, catch up, sit around the campfire. So an opportunity of a lifetime. This Bar X experience has been exceptional. The fact that these guys can get all of us together and have that bonding experience, it's been phenomenal. When I was a kid, I started fly fishing when I was around third grade. And then um, a teacher of mine in fourth grade started off getting me to tie flies. And I was lucky enough to grow up on a river. And then I joined the Marine Corps and I didn't do it for a long time. I never seen a organization that focused on reuniting groups of people. Usually it's just we want wounded Marines or wounded service members to show up here and that's, you know, maybe bring a buddy. But this one was like, wow, their mission is exactly what we're doing. Highlight was seeing the guys, but as far as the activities, like catching my first fish, like fly fishing was a lot of fun. I've never fished like that before, so that was definitely worth the experience. I thoroughly had an amazing time. You know, it was even more enjoyable for me was seeing the other Marines. Getting to see Todd, you know, develop a system that worked for fishing, it was just it was pretty awesome. Seeing him figure it out that quick and, and he was killing it, catching more fish than I was. It wasn't easy to learn, but um, once I kind of figured out the technique, I was surprised like the last day I, I brought in like eight or nine fish all on my own, minus like the putting it into the net part, you know, but I like fly fishing, it's, it's pretty fun. Fly fishing for me, uh, this was a new beast. It's one of those things you, I don't think you can go back and do regular fishing because it, it was so awesome to experience that. The biggest thing here at Bar X, seeing my friends be able to pick it up quickly and all, you know, land multiple good fish. Anymore? I'm very thankful to be out here. I don't think that we would have met this year if it weren't for Bar X. I also think I'm a little inspired by the way that y'all are doing it. It's much different than the vibe and, and the, the intention is, it's different than what other nonprofits are doing. And I think y'all are planting a seed in, in these guys' minds as to what, what can we be doing. One of our reunions was during the recon challenge. It's a pretty rigorous event. We run and hike and do all these obstacles for 15 to 20 hours during a single period. And we do this to not only recognize our fallen, but even some of our severely wounded Marines by carrying them through the course on our backs. It just shows that we still have each other's back and we care about one another. You don't realize what you have, but then we met up every year and all of a sudden we realize we have something that some of the other platoons don't have, or maybe they don't realize they have. We're veterans, but still challenge ourselves with adversity. You know, climbing Mount Baker, for example. Somebody would think, well, you're, you're insane for doing that. For some people, that's just like uh, way too far out of the reach. Not for us, you know, no. We'll go skydiving tomorrow, we'll go fly fishing the next day and we'll go scuba diving and surfing and snow skiing and do all the things that people would say like, how do your men do that in some of the physical state that they're in? Well, well there's a will, there's a way. The importance of just reconnecting with guys, I think it's vital. I don't think it's important, it's, it's absolutely vital. The recon community has this really strong sense of brotherhood and we don't really understand what the brotherhood is until we start in times of struggle. These are the only guys I stay in contact with, um, the only guys I actually truly trust and where I don't have to worry. I know regardless of what happens that they'll be there for me. I consider them to be my family. The first couple of years it was kind of tough. When we got thrown back out into the civilian world, everybody's scrambling trying to, you know, get their lives set back up. So I was in the hospital for quite a long time and then I was stuck back in the barracks for about 18 months while all of these guys went on deployments and so I was really isolated and I turned into a pretty uh, frustrated person. And since we all went through a lot of these same problems, uh, a lot of the same struggles, I think we really were able to help each other cope and talk to each other throughout this time. Unfortunately our community is small and 
the suicide rate is not the greatest. You never want to look back and go, what could I have done or what didn't I do? The guys were there for me, for sure, in Afghanistan, just daily. You know, you look to your left and right, there, there they are. Getting out now just to see each other and, and talk about things, it certainly helps me. Me listening to your perspective and you listening to my perspective, you know, it, it gives that light of, I'm not the only one going through this. You know, we're all going through this together. It's nice that if I go through a phase that I know there's going to be someone knocking at my door saying like, hey, you know, like, no, not, you're not doing this. You know, like, it's not how we're going to go down this road. Pride's a big thing. And to talk about, you know, things that make you vulnerable, you know, guys don't like doing that. So when it's a brother or another former recon guy, I think that opens it up to be able to talk. I would encourage you know, other units to be adventurous, to get out there and find something that would promote that camaraderie. You see the team doing it. It's not an individual doing it. You see the team accomplishing this task. Continuity of you know, the brotherhood. For mental health, I think it's a big deal. And this brings us back to like a safe place with everybody. And I think it just gets stronger every year. Keep in touch with the guys you deployed with and reach out. Try to try to keep that brotherhood alive because they, unlike anyone who you might be dealing with now, they actually understand where you're coming from. The guys are committed to the men to their left and right. We have that trust and confidence and that bond with one another. They're going to protect you. They're going to give their life for you if need be. And uh, it's like family. We still bring those dark, bad times up because, you know, it's trauma. And talking about it is the medicine. It's not going away. It's going to stay with us. So, you know, to turn that into a positive light and change your perspective, don't let it beat you, turn it into a positive. And I think that's what Bar X has done. You know, bring us together and make this a positive. The guys on the battlefield, every one of them, uh, performed, um, in my opinion, with gallantry and deserve to be recognized with all the valor that we can give them so that their, their work, their sacrifice doesn't go unnoticed. And their children, their spouses, their grandchildren can look back and see what their father, their uncle, their grandpa did you know, just like we all have in our time, when we look at the, the wall with Grandpa's medals on the wall, what, what did he really do? Um, we try to capture that and recognize it and acknowledge it the best you can. Oh, it was high.